Welcome to Debunking the Myth, Right Brain versus Left Brain. A common misconception. Some people, including educators, have the common but incorrect belief about the brain that one side or hemisphere is stronger than the other, making the argument that individuals who are creative, emotional, or artistic type are right-brained, and the logical, analytical, or mathematical types are left-brained. This is an example where, as researchers Casey Hook and Martha Ferris state, neuroscience can have real relevance to educators' work. In an interview for PLOS Blogs, author Neuroskeptic asked Michael Corbalis, a professor at the university in Auckland, New Zealand, to explain why the myth of the binary brain has been so popular. He explained that for the human brain, dichotomies have a natural attraction. We love to distinguish male from female, good from evil, day from night, introvert from extrovert, Western from Eastern, science from art, and so forth. In essence, human nature makes us divide and categorize ourselves. In order to understand where this categorization originated, we must take a look at neuroscience studies. In one case, Benedict Carey describes the story of HM, a patient of William Beecher Scoville, a neurosurgeon at Hartford Hospital. HM suffered from devastating seizures and Scoville chose to surgically remo remove brain tissue, including the patient's hippocampus. HM consequentially had fewer seizures, however, he also lost the ability to form new memories. Research by an English psychologist named Brenda Milner went on to show that although HM could not register new information, he could develop new physical skills. This was key in demonstrating that the brain has specific areas that handle different functions, including memory formation. In the 1960s, a Caltech neuroscientist named Roger Sperry studied patients with epilepsy who underwent split brain surgery, a surgical procedure that cut the brain along, along a structure called the corpus callosum, which is part of the brain that transmits information between the right and left, left hemispheres. Sperry found that when the corpus callosum is cut, this prevents communication between the two hemispheres. Sperry and other researchers conducted studies to determine which parts or sides of the brain were involved in language, math, drawing, and other functions. In one study, Sperry found that due to the severed connection, when patients' right hemispheres were shown a picture, they were unable to name the picture because the left hemisphere, hemisphere received no information. The facts are that the brain has two hemispheres and different regions of the brain are utilized for specific functions. Dr. Jeff Anderson, director of the fMRI Neurosurgical Mapping Service at the University of Utah, states that lateralization, also referred to as hemispheric specialization or functional asymmetry, is indeed real. Lateralization is a popular explanation, particularly for language and spatial abilities. For example, speech emanates from Broca's and Wernicke's areas, which are located in the left side of the brain. Here are the inaccuracies and the truth about the power of the human brain. In actuality, it is the connections among all brain regions that enable humans to engage in both creativity and analytical thinking. Anderson's team examined brain scans of participants ages 7 to 29 while they were resting. They looked at brain scans of these subjects and found neural connections and activity within and between 7,000 brain regions. Although they saw pockets of heavy neural traffic in certain key regions, on average, both sides of the brain were essentially equal in their neural networks and connectivity. As Anne Pietrangelo states, whether you're performing a logical or creative function, you're receiving input from both sides of your brain. For example, the left brain is credited with language, but the right brain helps you understand context and tone. The left brain handles mathematical equations, but the right brain helps out with comparisons and rough estimates. Professor Dave of Professor Dave Explains points out some of the inaccuracies about the right brain-left brain myth. 
giving two important examples of why the myth just doesn't make sense. For one, whereas believers of the myth would say that creative writers, such as poets or novelists, are right-brained, in actuality, they must utilize the left cerebral hemisphere because the ability to understand and produce language is focused in the left side of the brain. And for those who would stereotypically be categorized as left brain, such as scientists and engineers, they must often utilize the right cerebral hemisphere's visual spatial abilities, such as the ability to interpret algebraic equations in terms of geometric curves. What this means for educators is that students don't use only one side of their brains at a time. Teachers are in the business of shaping brains, so it is important that they learn the truth about this neuromyth and understand that they must focus on enhancing the abilities and skills associated with both hemispheres. Because the hemispheres are connected and speak to each other when performing linguistic, visual, and spatial functions, to name a few, teachers must see past the myth of right-brained versus left-brained students and understand the importance of developing and enhancing all of the neural networks between the two hemispheres. Thank you for viewing this presentation of Debunking the Myth, Right Brain versus Left Brain.